All right, welcome to my laboratory. Welcome on in. Yes, we are growing shiitakes mainly. So that was my little curtain because I got UV lights on a timer that operate and kill things while I sleep. But I also spray everything down with an alcohol to start things out, rub down the table, and then turn on my flow hood, get things cranking as soon as possible. So I'm letting you guys into my lab. I'm gonna show you my little workflow for here. So this is my little DIY way that I have my pressure cooker and bring them into my clean room without having a big old double door autoclave. So you can see I have this little room in here. And so this is where my pressure cooker lives. There's a room, or there, excuse me, there's a door on that far wall that I bring in the dirty substrate, load the cooker, do the pressure cook, and then I usually just let it cool for a whole day. And then I sterilize this room and that way I can open it into this nice clean room. That's also why I'm wearing that vapor mask because I use a, an MMS solution or a chlorine dioxide to, to clean this little room and make it safe to bring these blocks out. And then I'm bringing blocks out onto my laminar flow hood, a nice clean airflow. So bringing all my blocks out, I have all these false floors right here. So I can fit with these big jumbo bags, I can fit seven blocks on each floor. With the large bags, I can fit 24 blocks total. These jumbo bags is 21 total. You see I'm pointing out the space around the blocks. It's very important to have space. That is a maxed out cooker right there. I use these little old kind of um, I'm just using those spaces, the old clamps that don't work anymore. So there we go. I've got everything loaded up. Got all my blocks out there in front of my cooker. Since I was in that room, I want to make sure I spray my hands now that I'm back in the lab. And now, boom, lab is back sealed. Holla, here we go. We're ready to get into it. So let's go select our spawn block. I keep my spawn blocks. Today I'm inoculating shiitake. So I keep my shiitake spawn back behind this dark curtain. The reason why, shiitake is very sensitive to light. So I don't want my spawn blistering. And so I found with like kind of medium nitrogen levels, I can hold off a blister behind that black thing very, very well. So these spawn blocks are all made with eucalyptus spawns. So it gives it that kind of reddish tint. Oh yeah, I just wanna, I gotta get my vapor mask off. Oh, breathing good, feeling a lot better. Oh yeah, it's like the, the lower COVID. I got my headphones on, I'm ready to rock. All right, so first step, break this thing up. I'm able to keep these spawn blocks around for about a month, right? So when they're just a week in, they're really easy to break up. You can see there's nice coverage of mycelium, no blistering. These are about, I don't know, but a couple weeks in. So they're a little harder to break up. Break it up good. Break it up as best as you can in the bag. Rotate around. I'm not going to waste your time, so I'm going to speed this up. Break it up. There we go. Things are good. I find that just an alcohol spray on my stair, on my scalpel will do the trick. Cut that bag open. Give yourself a nice big hole. Not too big, but a nice big hole that things aren't going to block up in there as you uh, pour in. And then, gang, always make sure things in front of the laminar fluid and you are downstream. So I'm checking air. I always get behind. It smells good. That's right. That's what that was about, folks. It smells good. You can check for bacteria really well with your olfactory gland. You can smell for them. I find actually better than you can see them. So here we go. We're opening this thing up. I'm going to use my kind of hands to pop that substrate to the bottom. Open a nice big open. And then I like to do these with the bigger bags. Most bags I bring it down so it's just easier to pour and less spill, right? So just this little lip instead of a giant floppy lip. Um, so I can pour in a little easier. So gang, I noticed the lights are kind of hard to see with the camera. So I'm going to take one from the team. I'm going to do this with out bright lights. And inoculate with a little more softer lights for you. Hopefully you can see. So a very important thing when you're doing this is you want to make sure you have the even amount of spawn for each bag. So I just go off of eye. Look at this. I've got a bag wide open, catching air right here. It's hard to see, but I'm holding with my fingers so that it stays as flat as possible. You don't want to wrinkle. It is challenging. I'm going to be straight up. It's kind of challenging. I do multiple impact seals. I find I have to adjust the heat a little off of each one because if you use it multiple times right in a row, it gets hot. But there you go. You got a nice multi-layer seal. The plenum is good. I like the multi because sometimes the seal breaks and that way you have like a backup seal. 
So you want that nice plenum in there. You see how much air is in there because even though you have the filter patch, as most of you guys watching this know, you want enough air in there. It's like a little kind of micro environment in there. So it's got enough air to kind of move and not suffocate. So right now I'm just breaking up any clumps. There's usually always more clumps. I find the best powder, the better. I mean, you're using a soda sponge. So the more powder, the more coverage you can get. So it takes a second, but I break it up again on the top. Now here's my trick goes. Guys, these are the tips. All right, start from the bottom and work up. Shake it up, shake it around. Sawdust, I find, is more time consuming to get even coverage than grain. Grain, you can just kind of flip the thigh around, flip the thigh around, bang, you're done, moving on. This, I find I gotta work it. So I, this is kind of my normal routine. I start at the bottom, I work up, then I lay it down, see, there we go, and then I bring it back up, and I work for the base, and kind of do this kind of shaky, kind of strangly move, right? And see, I've already got it down the middle. This is advantage to using that red sada spot so that you can see where it is in relation to the sugar cane. Um, I find it really helpful to know that I'm getting even coverage. Obviously, I've done a ton where my, my spawn is the same color. I use sugar cane as the spawn, but it, I will find I'm liking the difference in color. So right now, this is my classic move. Get it down, and I do this little karate chop. Create some space, and then check it out. I pull it down, because you want that spawn to move to the bottom. You want it all the way around, but I find it... You have to work at it to get to the bottom. And then I'm looking for clumps, mixing it up, shake it around, make some space, get it around, shake it, shake it, shake it, make more space. And then here we go, starting from the bottom, do this kind of sh strangly shake, you know, shake the baby move, kind of move from the bottom up. Is that wrong? Can I say that? I don't know. But uh, shake it around, make space, then start at the bottom. Oh, look, now I'm feeling good. I got coverage. You know, that was a pretty efficient bag. Shows you a nice technique. Some bags take longer than others, but that's nice. Now tamp it down, tamp it, tamp it, tamp it down. And then we're gonna push it down. Push it with one hand at a time so you don't risk breaking the plenum. And um, you really wanna compact the blocks as best you can. One, the mycelium can run faster, and two, the more denseness, you should get more. Uh, mushrooms or the shiitakes or whatever else you got. Boom, checking that plenum, it's nice. Oh, yep, yep, double, yep, we got the picture, you got a plenum, that's nice. All right, moving on, next block, next block. So again, you're just working through. Um, I usually go one solid block to about 10. You know, I'm fitting about 21 blocks, so one gets 10, one gets 11. Labeling, obviously, extremely important. Dating, very important. I use, like most mushroom growers, the Latin name, Salentinula idotes is shiitake. And then find a home, so check it out. Um, get these blocks on the shelves. You can look at some, uh, here's some different stages of growth. You see there, I didn't get it all the way down the bottom. You see that, uh, but different blistering. Check out my uh, a video I recently put on Patreon. It goes into more of the effects of light and vibration on shiitake blocks. It's kind of interesting, but thanks for tuning in. I hope it gives you an idea how I work in my lab, a little workflow, and hopefully it inspires you and helps you and teaches you. Thank you for watching, subscribing, doing all that you're doing. Patrons, thank you so much. I much appreciate it. Ch -ch Ciao.